By the end of today's video, a lot of you guys will not be happy with me because today I am ranking every single fifth tier upgrade in Battles 2 on a tier list from S to garbage. Now, this is all going to be to my own discretion of how good I think these upgrades are. So, lots of you guys are going to disagree in the comments, and that is fine. And um, to people who say, what gives you the power to make a tier list? Well, I am someone who's played this game a ton. I have over 7,000 games played in Battles 2. And my best badges have finished a season top 2, top 3, and then 2 seasons top 10. So, I have some experience. But um, without further ado, let's hop right into it. Also guys, in the past I have made a tier list for this as well, but that was 11 months ago. So if you'd like to compare this tier list with my previous one, you can go watch that video. It is right here. Um, It's pretty good, but this one's going to be updated because there's been a ton of changes since then. And first things first, we have the Super Mines. Okay, Super Mines is a Spike Factory upgrade, which is really, really powerful against... um. BEDs and the OMGs, to be honest, it has a ton of damage output, got big explosion radius, really good to stack buffs on as well, like the Overclock and the Permabrew. Now, it is super expensive, though, is one of the downsides, and you need to get it up quite a bit before a rush as well, because if you get it up, like, right when they rush you, then you're not going to have a big pile of spikes, and it's kind of useless. So, because of those downsides, I'm thinking C or B, and I'm going to go with B, I think. Um... I might come back to these later at, and tweak up some placements, but B is going to be my current pick. Next one is the Pirate Lord. This is the Pirate Lord, right? Yeah, yeah. The Pirate Lord. Now, this upgrade on the boat allows the boat to um, pretty much instantly kill anything. A ZOMG, Fortified ZOMG, DDT, anything like that. No matter the health. So, that's a really big part of it. And it can kill three items. It only can kill one ZOMG, but it can hook in two other lower class mob balloons with the ability. It also does a little bit of popping, but the popping part of it is pretty useless. So it's, I'm pretty much only looking at this for the ability aspect. Um, in terms of towers with abilities to defend rushes, this is one of the best to defending. Like this helps you defend pretty much all round 22 all out rushes, round 24 all out rushes. If you have boat, making boat one of the best mid game defenders in the game. So especially against fortified balloons as well because it can deal with fortified balloons the same it can deal with them um, normal so i'm probably gonna go with a not saying boat is an a tower or anything but this this upgrade is definitely really helpful homeland defense now homeland defense guys is a crazy upgrade it literally doubles the attack speed and pierce of your towers every tower on the map so when you have it active it quadruples the strength of your towers effectively um your towers are four times stronger at their max pop and power value it's very expensive though, it's about $80,000 to buy this thing altogether, and the ability only lasts for 18 seconds because they did nerf it two times recently, they made it cost $5,000 more, and lowered the ability um, duration. So in the past, I probably would put this S because of how strong it is, but now I think it's going to go A. But it's going to be like top of A, because the way it's going to work is um, it's going to be the rankings vertically, but also in each, each letter category, Left is going to be the most highly rated. Right is going to be the least highly rated. All right, now we got the farm upgrades. We got the banana citrus. We got the monkey Wall Street. Farm is definitely one of the best upgrades in the entire game, if not the best, because farming strategy is kind of destroying everything right now, especially with Jericho. So I kind of feel like if I'm going to have S tier things, the farms might be S tier right now, to be honest. And the thing about farms is also the fifth tier upgrades kind of carry the farms. Farms do not actually produce you that much money for like how much you're spending on it on the fourth tier or third tier level, but the fifth tiers um, have a really good return on value, especially the Banana Central, which buffs all your BRFs as well. So then the BRFs that are buffed by it also have a good return on value. Now, how, which ranking will I do inside of the S tier is the question. I think we're going to go with Monkey Wall Street on top, to be honest. Banana Central got nerfed a ton in the... Um, a bunch of updates kind of recently it used to cost like sixty thousand dollars and buff all your brfs by 25 percent but now it costs sixty eight thousand so eight thousand extra and it buffs them only by 20 percent so 25 percent so it did get hit kind of hard by nerfs recently so i think monkey wall is the best because a lot of cases you don't even be able to get a banana central up these days all right we got the mad mad is probably the best dartling fifth tier but dartling honestly is not a super good tower right now it's used sometimes but um I wouldn't say it's a meta tower. And 
most of the time if you're using dartling as well you're using dartling elk farm which is an aggressive strategy for hard maps and the mad is not even touched when you're using that strategy although the mad is a really good um tower i'm not gonna put it s tier as lots of people would probably expect i think i think it'll go a tier under the home and defense is what i'm gonna do and that leads us to master bomber tower that you pair with the mad a lot um very good ninja upgrade honestly this is one of the best upgrades in the game it's just not utilized much um, anymore because Ninja Elk's not really popular right now since they nerfed the Perma Brew. But in previous updates, dude, the Master Bomber is absolutely insane. It's great against uh, group ZMG rushes. It does a ton of damage against group stuff. The bombs are great. I honestly, I kind of want to put this S tier. Even though Ninja's probably not good, a very good tower right now, I think this fifth tier in particular is very, very strong. Next one is Plasma Monkey Fan Club. This is an interesting one. Um, Dart Monkey can be used on a couple of maps, and Plasma Monkey Fan Club is really strong, but not lonesome. You need other towers like um, Perma Brew or Cripple or Super Brittle to buff the damage of Plasma Monkey Fan Club to make it usable. Because lonesome, it does very little damage. Um, so it's very reliant on other towers on your in your loadout as well. But when paired with those towers, it can be very strong. So. I think this will probably be a B tier. Yeah, I might be ranking everything a little high, but I feel like we've con come across some of the better upgrades early on. So that's kind of why we're ranking this way. Legend of the Night. Okay, Legend of the Night is a super expensive super monkey upgrade. It costs like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't exactly know the cost, but and then you have the previous upgrades as well. Um, so you can pretty much get it in like 0.01% of Holo Masters games because you're never that rich. It does produce a dark portal, which is pretty strong. It is a little bit more DPS than the dark champ as well, but it's just so expensive to the point where you can barely ever get it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put it in the garbage category because there's definitely upgrades that are worse than it, but it, it'll probably go, it'll probably be in D. Tax zone, tax zone is pretty much the same case as the um, plasma fan club, but I think it's better because it's not near as expensive and it's not ability based. But yeah, you pretty much have to pair this with um debuffs or perma brew or something like that to make it useful since it's got a really high attack speed with low damage so it gets buffed a ton but um is not very good lonesome so this will probably be hmm, i think bottom of a tier is fine we have balloon exclusion zone balloon exclusion zone is a pretty solid upgrade um it's really good against like all out zmg rushes round 24 all up bfbs that type of stuff Pretty good cleanup as well. The downside of this tower though, and it's a big downside, is that it does not pop lead balloons. So it can't defend DDTs unless you have something like an alchemist buffing it or embrittlement, um, embrittling the DDTs and stuff. And it doesn't do that much uh, BED damage compared to like the MAD and stuff. So it's still a decent fifth tier overall. And I'll probably put it in B category for that. And do I wanna put it above the Plasma Monkey Fan Club in the Super Mines is the question. I think we'll put it between them. We'll put it between them. All right, Grandmaster Ninja. Grandmaster Ninja is actually not very good, guys. Um, in some of my previous videos, if you've read my titles, it's actually better to spam. Um, it's actually better to spam Bloonjitsu's with an Alk buff rather than getting up a Grandmaster Ninja because the Bloonjitsu's have almost two times the BAD popping power for their price comparatively. The only cases where you want to get the Grandmaster Ninja up is obviously it's more space efficient and it has a little bit more range. So, blue, a fourth tier Bloon Jitsu spamming that is better with a Perma Brew rather than the Grandmaster. So this tower is overall is actually not very strong. Um, it's still decent, don't get me wrong, but that's why I'm not going to put it very high on the list. I think it would be a C tier here. Okay, we got the Balloon Crush. Balloon Crush is actually a really good upgrade, even though um, Bomb is not a very good tower. It's probably one of the best cleanup towers in the game behind the Master Bomber, because... It permanently stuns anything that's not a BAD. It's got a ton of pierce, and it's cheaper than stuff like the Superstorm as well. It does not have built in camo detection, though, which is one of the downsides. No built in camo detection on it. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really good upgrade. I'm not going to lie, dude. Even though Bomb's not a very strong upgrade overall, I think this is an S tier, to be honest. Balloon Crush is kind of insane. Trade Empire. Okay, Trade Empire is um a pretty good upgrade for the boat. It used to be really good because you could get boat farms a lot better, um, but they nerfed the merchantman farming quite a bit. 
But even though trade, if you get like a full trade empire, especially on maps like Star with like a lot of water space, then it can be really effective way to farm. Plus, um, adding damage to your defense because obviously, if you have a bunch of boat farms down, you're not gonna have to have as much other defense on the map since they, they pop balloons. So, this might be a B tier upgrade or an A tier. I'm gonna go with B tier, I think. Yeah. Um, Moab, what is this one called? It's not Moab Assassin, it's uh, Moab Eliminator. Moab Eliminator, okay. Moab Eliminator, honestly, from my experience, it's not very good in um, BT Battles 2. It's just, it costs a ton, and even if you have like your Biker Bones ability buffing and stuff, it doesn't put that big of a dent into BAD rushes. Um, that's why most of the time, if you're going bomb, you're going sub, and you're just re relying on the first strike to pop the BAD rushes. Because bomb, ha you have to spend a lot of money with bomb to pop around 30 BAD. So, Mobile Eliminator is honestly not very good, and I'm probably going to put it in... I think I'm putting it, putting it in C here. Yeah. Archmage. Archmage used to be garbage, guys. In my previous list, I probably put it very low. Archmage used to be really bad, but they have buffed it time after time again, adding more B, uh, DT damage, adding more damage, um, increasing the fire rate. I don't exactly know what the buffs were, but th this, guy, this guy's been buffed a lot. And now he's actually pretty solid, really good defending DTs. Um, He's one of the reasons why Wizard is one of the best towers in the game right now. Um, for that reason, I'm probably going to put him in A tier. We're in A tier exactly, I think, somewhere around here. Yeah. Uh, Permabrew. Another thing with Permabrew is kind of the opposite. It used to be extremely good. It had uh, more range. It can buff a ton of ninjas, but it did get nerfed recently, where the Permabrew range went from 55 to 45. And because of that, it's not near as good anymore, anymore guys. You don't see Ninja Alk much anymore this season. Um, you could still move your Permabrew around with a heli to make it like cover the full map, but overall Permabrew is a lot worse now. Um, so I think it's going to be a B tier, even though it, before the update, I probably would put it S tier. That's how much the rage uh, nerf kind of impacted it. All right, our next tower is the Elite Sniper. Elite Sniper is um really good for the sniper. It does a lot of damage, cleans up a lot of balloons, and it's a pretty effective farm as well. Even though Sniper's not a very good tower overall, I think Elite Sniper is one of the be better fifth tiers. I think I'm gonna put it in A tier right by this. Um, sniper and Dart Monkey are kind of best friends, so they like to be paired up a lot together because they have some pretty good synergy. Um, Monkey Nomics. Monkey Nomics is honestly not a very good upgrade. There is some tech where you can like buy and sell the ability under a favorite trades to get some pretty good um income, which has been shown by ISAB and some others. So you have that with it, but overall you don't get this upgrade too often because it costs a lot and it's not even that efficient of an ability. It gives you two thousand. No, it gives you it gives you twenty thousand dollars every sixty seconds. So it's effectively buying two thousand eco. But I've done the math before, and it's buying 2,000 eco less efficiently than ecoing itself. So it's not honestly very good, which is why I think I'm going to put this in C tier. You pretty much only see people running the first two farm upgrades I was talking about for fifth tiers most of the time. Unless you have a full map of farms, then you can just then people just buy this guy. Apache Prime. Okay, Apache Prime, um, Heli is not really used to much right now. But Apache Prime is a pretty good 5th tier. It's kind of the same thing going on with the Dart Monkey and the um, and the Grandmaster that I was talking about before in the Tax Zone. Where it doesn't do that well without buffs given to it. But when you give the Super Brittle, the Cripple, um, a Perma Brew, that type of stuff. Then the Apache Prime can be a pretty good beast. It has a ton of pierce as well. So it's good against Group ZMGs. Which Group ZMGs are one of the most difficult rushes to defend in Battles 2. So it's got that going for it. So I think we're going to put this guy in B tier, but in the higher end of it. Not as good as Bez, I don't think. Well, it's probably right there with it. We'll put it actually ahead of it. Cripple, we are just talking about Cripple. Really good upgrade, it can stun balloons. It can um, give you plus five damage to the balloons stunned. If, if group ZMGs were not a thing in this game, I would rank this higher, but the problem with this guy is when your opponent rushes you with a group ZMG rush, he can only affect a very small amount of the ZMGs in the rush. So most of the rush gets untouched with his debuff, um, making him almost useless against the rush. While stuff like the Super Brittle can affect a greater portion of it, or stuff like the Perma Brew can obviously buff all your towers against the Group ZMG rush. So because of that, I think he's worse than those buffs, but he's not terrible. 
Pro put him bottom of B tier, I think. No, we'll go we'll go top of C. I don't have enough towers at the I don't have enough towers in the lower tiers, to be honest. Super Biddle. Super Biddle is one of the better debuffs, if not the best. Uh, Tack Ice Farm used to be really good. Heli Ice Village used to be really good. There used to be a lot of Darling Ice Village used to be really good. There used to be a lot of upgrades that worked well with Super Brittle. Although Ice has been nerfed a lot, Village has been nerfed a lot, so you don't really see them as much anymore. But it's still a very good upgrade nonetheless. And I think we'll put it in A tier, honestly. Even though Ice is not used too much right now, it's still a fantastic upgrade overall. Carpet of Spikes. Carpet of Spikes is a pretty strong upgrade. It does a lot of BAD damage, to be honest. Like, if you have that ability going on over and over again, even if you micro it too, you can micro Carpet of Spikes, and it, it does a lot of BAD damage. One of the best BAD pop and power inside of the entire game. Um, It does terrible against group ZMGs, though. It's not good against group ZMGs. It's a big weakness of it. But because of the BAD usefulness, and also the ability to pop DTs as well, I think it goes... I think I'll put it above Super Mines, to be honest. But towards the bottom of A tier. BMA, Bloon Master Alchemist. Now, lots of you guys will probably not agree with my um, placement of this on the list, but Bloon Master Alchemist is honestly not very good, dude. It's not. It costs a lot of money. It's 40,000 plus, and it does insta-kill ZMGs. So I read this comment over and over again in my videos. When I get rushed with um, all the ZMGs and I have Ninja Alchemist or something, Ryan, why did you not place a Bloon Master Alchemist? Guys, it shoots really slowly, so if you have a Blue Master Aquamist and someone sends you 100 ZMGs, it's going to pop like 6 of them. It's not going to make much of a dent. Um, it attacks way too slowly. Stuff like the Master Bomber or other cleanup towers are a lot better at dealing with it. Have a lot better, um, a lot better damage count against the group ZMG rush. And because of that, I think it's going to go C tier. I don't want to put it all the way in D. Yeah, we'll keep it C tier for now. Yeah, that's fine. Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness is actually pretty strong. Um, It's a pretty good cleanup tower for the wizard. Helps out a lot for DDTs. Prince of Darkness and Archmage are probably the best two wizard fifth tiers. Um, that's what people normally use when you're seeing people go attack farm wizard. I don't know if it's better or worse than the Archmage, but we're probably going to put it in a same similar spot. Yeah, yeah. Looking at this, I might want to move some of these hmm because i feel like our a category is a little bit flooded we're gonna move carpet spikes with super mines down here spirit of the force spirit of the forest used to be the best upgrade in the entire game guys it used to be the best upgrade in the entire game you could solo any round 22 round 24 rush with it it made you money 3,000 per round it was really really strong and they nerfed its damage from 20 down to like 13 i think so that was like a 30% damage debuff, or 35%. And because of that, um, Druid's not very good anymore overall, and this can't deal with DTs as well, although it still makes you money and still can deal with round 22, round 24 rushes decently well. But it's, it used to be S tier, definitely, and now it's probably top of B. Yeah, we'll go top of B tier, we'll go top of B tier. Um, Century Champion. Century Champion is honestly not very good. I've tried even pairing it with like debuffs like the Super Riddle and Cripple. It doesn't do that much damage, guys. And the explosions from the centuries don't do that well either. This is going to be one of the lower ranked ones. Now, question is, do I put it in garbage or not? I don't think there's, it's, we're going to be putting it in garbage. There's definitely some upgrades that are worse than it, but it's going to be D tier for sure. Wizard Lord Phoenix. It's a decent upgrade. I think the other two wizard up fifth tiers are better. Um, it's a decent upgrade, though, and it buffs all the other phoenixes on the map, too. I have no idea how much it buffs them by, though. I kind of looked that up, and no one really had answers to how much it buffs the phoenixes on the map by. But um, it's decent. It's not great. Probably top of C tier. Yeah, go top of C tier for that. What is this? Bomb Blitz. Bomb Blitz. Okay. So... In one of the recent patch notes, Ninja Kiwi said Bomb Blitz um, ability now activated before Bloons actually leaked, but I think Boltrix tried it and it didn't actually work, so it might be glitched, and if that's the case, it's it's a really terrible upgrade. Um, it costs a lot, it only can it only can defend like a BFB, I don't think it can even defend a B fortified BFB with its Bomb Blitz sometimes, um, so it can't even defend that strongly. If you go and bomb most of the time, you're never going to purchase this upgrade. You're just going to be spamming maulers. You're just getting up a balloon, um, spamming maulers or like recursive clusters at the end to clean up. 
This is pretty much never used. So I'm putting this in garbage. It's garbage, guys. This is the first garbage one. Sky Shredder. Sky Shredder is a decent upgrade. It has um pretty decent DDT popping power. Um, shoots a big missile, which can explode a lot. You see it sometimes on maps like Porce when people were in ASOC sub, but that's like the only time I ever see the upgrade the upgrade used. And since it's not very popular, it's only decent. It will be C or B. Hmm. We'll go top of C. We'll go top of C. True Sun God. True Sun God did receive a buff recently. We went down to 400,000. It's also received a damage buff in the past as well. But besides that, though, it's still... Even when the, they just removed Thin Ice from Hole Masters 2, so you're never going to see it in an actual Hole Masters game. You could sometimes see it in Thin Ice, but now you'll never see it, trust me. you only see it in Bonanza, and in Bonanza, it's really good. But I'm, I'm ranking these based on a ranked mode in Hole of Masters, so I'm putting this in garbage as well. I'm putting this in garbage as well. You're never going to see it. It's way too expensive to ever use. Bloon Cineration. Bloon Cineration, I've actually seen some people have success with this on some maps. Um... It does pretty decent DDT damage. Got, it's got that burn effect and everything. I wouldn't say it's great by any means, but um, it's actually better than a lot of you would probably think. Because a lot of you probably think I put it in garbage. I'm going to put it in C tier. I haven't used it too much, but I have seen a lot of people have success with it. And it's not that terrible. Carrier Flagship. This buffs all your other boats on the map. And um, it's pretty good DPS in itself. But most of the time in boat strategies, surprisingly, you're not using the boat to defend stuff leaking, guys. Boat is mostly used as a farm. And helps you out with um pulling blimps in with the fifth tier. So boats bar barely ever used with the carrier flagship or the um the aircraft carriers late game. And because of that, I don't think this upgrade's honestly very good. We're probably gonna put it towards the back of C tier. Yeah. Preemptive strike. Preemptive strike is not very good either. Um sub does have one of the best abilities in the game, which is first strike, but preemptive strike is not much of a step above that. It's it gives a little explosion to every single uh, mob that enters, but that can't even solo fortify DTs. It only pops normal DTs, and at some point, it can't even pop normal DTs anymore because the ramping's too much. So, this honestly goes into D tier. It's not. It's not very good. It's not very good. Um, what is this? Monkeyopolis. Monkeyopolis has received so many buffs and changes recently, um, that it does have its spot in the game. But the funny part is, guys. Its spot is not with farming strategies. I've tried using this with, with, with I've tried using this with farming strategies, and it never goes well. It slows down your farms too much because you don't get good sell value on it when you sacrifice farms into it. However, it does have a spot in eco strategies. Funny enough, it's actually pretty good to build up in an eco strategy um, because it produces money without sacrificing any farms, and it's decent money as well. So, if it was only farming strategies concerned, I'd probably put it in garbage. But since it has a place in eco strategies, I'm going to put it in C tier. Okay, we've actually put a pretty big dent in them. We still have some left. I'm about 30 minutes into the recording now. Um, we got... What is this one? This guy is the Crossbow Master. Crossbow Master is actually pretty decent for the Dark Monkey. It's really cheap, which is one of the big sides. It's within the good sides of it. It's really, really cheap. It can defend all up BFBs, do a pretty good dent in ZOMG rushes. Shoots really fast. Does decent DDT damage as well. Um... It's a pretty good overall, like, all-around tower. You don't really need buffs or anything on it. It can pretty much deal with most things by itself. It's good against ceramics, good against Moabs. So, because of that, I'm going to put it upper B tier, because it, it deals with a lot on its own. It's pretty good overall. Triple XL Trap. Triple XL Trap can insta-kill ZMGs, insta-kill fortified ZMGs, make you some money from AI balloons, but you can't um, target it while making it the faster cross path anymore in the past you could get the faster engineering cross path and target it which made it really good plus you could boost it with the overclock which is one of the biggest things with the engineer but now you can no longer boost it with the overclock and target with the faster path so it gets overrun quickly and doesn't deploy fast enough to deal with a lot of the insides of rushes so it's not actually very good cleanup anymore and because of that even though it does make you a lot of money though from ai balloons so I'm not going to put super low, but I think it's going to be top of C tier here. I might want to put carry flagship into D tier or something else at this point. I think we're putting mob, mob eliminator into D tier. Yeah. Mob eliminator. Um, next one is, is this more glaives? Yeah, more glaives. I barely ever see this upgrade, to be honest, inside of whole masters. It deals with all that, um, it deals with all ceramics, of course. It, 
I think it does decent DT damage and fortified ZMG da or ZMG damage if you like stun everything with your if you stun everything with your mob presses inside of the range, it can deal with round 22 or round 24 all outs pretty well. But late game, it falls off pretty hard. And it's kind of expensive as well. So I wouldn't say it's terrible. But it's probably going to be some C tier upgrade, I think. Yeah. Icicle Impale. Icicle Impale is actually pretty good. It's a cheap um, it's a cheap cleanup tower. It stuns everything decently well. It's really good against DDTs. And again, one of the biggest things with it is cheap. And Ice has a lot of really strong abilities as well on top of that. So... Icicle Impale is probably an A tier here. We went through a lot of the better towers early. So it's been a while since we got an A tier. It feels good. It feels good. Ultra Juggernaut deals with pretty much any amount of ceramics, which is really good. Um, especially when you have other stuff in your dark strategies to deal with the higher layers. Like normally you have Sentai Churchill, which can pop down a ZMG and then the Ultra Juggernaut can get all the ceramics. So it's a pretty good combination. But it doesn't do very good DDT damage, even though they buffed it recently. And it doesn't do like any mob damage as well. So it's probably just going to be a C tier upgrade. Ray of Doom. Ray of Doom is very expensive. Very, very expensive. It costs like $90,000. And it does basically zero um, BED damage. It doesn't deal with DTs very well either because DTs are too fast to be popped down. Although it's pretty good in um, group CMGs, but not even that great against group CMGs, dude. I've had lots of games where I have like a Ray of Doom overclocked. And like a balloon exclusion zone and i still get overrun by group zmgs and if that's supposed to be ray of doom's thing killing a lot of balloons having a high pierce and it's getting overrun by group zmgs it's not a good day for it. it's not good looks for it dude because that's that's it's that's its thing you know so this is gonna go bottom of c tier i think bottom of c tier energizer um Energizer is pretty garbage. I'm, I'm going to leave it there, dude. I know it reduces ability cooldown times and stuff, but I've pretty much never seen this ability in Hall of Masters in the last year. So it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. We're, we're putting this into garbage category. What is this one? Balloon Solver. Balloon Solver, on the contrary, is actually pretty good. It's good against group ZMGs because you can glue every single one um, pretty well if you have it on strong. And then the glue stays on it for a while, so it can get all the insides pretty well. Well, it's really good at dealing with big clumps of balloons like round 22, round 24 all outs too. And yeah, really no complaints with this tower. I think this is a B tier one. Balloon Solver is pretty strong. Ultra Boost. Ultra Boost used to be in garbage category, but they did buff it quite a bit recently. They made it less expensive and made the time to get all of the stacks you need a lot faster. So because of that, I haven't tested out too much, so I don't know that greatly. Before it was definitely garbage. Now, probably C tier. Probably C tier, yeah, yeah. Avatar of Wrath. Avatar of Wrath is a really good upgrade, guys. Um, if you get a life buffed Avatar of Wrath, it can solo the F bad layer in round 33. I mean, round 30 pretty easily. And then you have Superstorm to get the inside. So you have cheap BD defense there. Avatar of Wrath is one of the best um, BD popping power towers in the entire game. I think I'm going to put it right there with the MAD because that's the only tower I'll, I'll compare it to in that aspect. MAD and Avatar of Wrath are going to be best friends right there. Um, this is Comanche Commander. I basically never see Comanche Commander used, to be honest. Heli's not used much either, and if you use Heli most of the time, you're not using the fifth tiers. I don't really, Apache Prime on B tier might be a little bit generous, but Comanche Commander is not as good as Apache Prime 2. I think it's going to be D tier right here. Super Glue, Super Glue is extremely good. Um, I'd rank it similar to Icicle and Pale. It does do better, though, with um, primary training and, like, Pierce buffs given to it, because it has a Perma Stole while Icicle and Pale is a slow so i think i'll rank it above it but there might be some there might be some arguing there between super glue and icicle and pale ranking next one is super maelstrom super maelstrom is actually pretty strong it can deal with all out bfb is really good it can actually pop like one zmg as well if you have a zmg really pretty weak and you boost it next to it it can just defend the whole thing like round 22 so it carries um tack farm wizard and defending some of that stuff it's Pretty useful to be honest. It's pretty good against all out ZMGs round 30 as well. No complaints really with the tower. I think it's going to be a B tier. I think we'll put it at B tier somewhere around here. Primary expertise. Um, I use this upgrade when I have Tack Glue Village. It increases the pierce of all your uh, primary towers even more. It increases like projectile speed and some other stuff. It's got more range than the normal village. It's pretty solid overall. The ballistic attack from it can be helpful too in some cases. I wouldn't say it's a fantastic tower, but I wouldn't say it's bad. 
I think it's going bottom of B tier here. What is this? Glue Storm? Glue Storm's actually pretty good. It's one of the it's a really good debuff because it affects the entire map, guys. None of the other debuffs like Super Brittle or Cripple infect the entire map. So that makes it really useful against group ZMG rushes because every ZMG is affected by it. And it's got pretty good uptime on the ability too. I think it's I think if you're cycling the ability, it's up about two-thirds of the time, and it's really cheap as well. It's a cheap debuff. So I think this is honestly an A-tier. Glue upgrade. Super uh What's it called? Blue Storm is a pretty good upgrade. Perma Spike. I haven't. I tried using it earlier, and I couldn't really tell how good it was. Um, the problem with Spike Factory upgrades like this is you need to build them up so much before your opponent rushes for it to be a useful defensive tool. And in battles too, building up defense a lot before your opponent rushes is normally bad because it's going to slow down your farm, slow down your eco, and you're going to have less money overall because of it. So that's one of the big problems with the spike factor with like the perma spike and the super mines in general. So I'm going to probably put this in C tier because of that. Sub commander. Sub commander buffs every single sub on the entire map. It's got global range for buffing too. And the past the only buffed inside of its range. It increases their pierce, increases their damage. I don't know if it increases their sub attack speed. Um, it's okay. I would say... I pretty much never see this upgrade used, but I see it used more than uh, Preemptive Strike. So, but it's honestly not very good overall. I think we'll put it top of D. Anti Bloon. Anti Bloon's actually pretty terrible, guys. Um, it's probably gonna be a surprise to some of you guys who love the tower from BT6, but in BT Battles 2, here's what the Anti Bloon is. It's a Tech Terror that has an ability that does two times the damage of Tech Terror, but it costs about four times the amount of the Tech Terror. So why don't you micro just two Tech Terror abilities instead of microing an anti bloon ability against a rush? I don't know. And um, its damage output's not very good either. The dark, um, the dark champ does a lot more damage than the anti bloon for a cheaper amount. So this is honestly a pretty garbage upgrade. The fifth tier from Super Monkey did not have a very good showing here. That doesn't mean Super Monkey is a terrible tower. Just when you're using the Super Monkey, you're rarely ever using the fifth tiers. And that's the same thing with the sub. If you're using the sub, you're rarely ever using the fifth tiers. But sub's still a decent tower. Um, next one is the Elite Defender. I don't think the Elite Defender is very good. They did give it some buffs recently to mob damage, but overall, I've never really seen it utilized well, and it just doesn't seem that good. I think we'll put in D tier. Superstorm. Now, lots of you guys are probably going to disagree with my placement here, saying Superstorm's trash, which it's not very good against DTs. It isn't. Um, I've seen it get overrun by small DT rushes when you don't have it life buffed or anything, but if you have a Superstorm life buffed, and it's got all the pop plus, it can defend DT rushes really well. And the big thing with Superstorm, which so many towers um, struggle with in this game, is it can solo round 30 ZMGs. This guy is the best round 30 ZMG defense in the entire game. And because of that, I can't go away without giving this guy an A ranking. I really can't. Druid has a lot of good 5th tier towers, but um, Druid's not very good tower overall right now because the early game's too expensive with it, to be honest. And the 4th tiers with Druid aren't very useful either. For defending rushes it's just it's just a fifth tier base tower for the most part what's this moa press this is mob domination they recently buffed this guy but i didn't test it so i'm not sure how much damage he actually does to bd rushes in the past this guy's been absolutely garbage though so i can't expect him to be very good for that reason i'm putting him in d tier special populations special populations is actually pretty decent um it can deal with round 22 round 24 all it's pretty well because you can micro the ability and you're getting the Heli crates on top of that for 8,000 a pop, which is pretty strong. So, this guy's probably going to go in C tier. Um, we're, in, we're in C tier. I think somewhere around here, in the middle of C tier. Uh, Zar Bomba. Zar Bomba is actually really good. That's one of the, This is one of the stronger parts about the ace, because Zar Bomba allows you to defend round 30 ZMG all-outs with ace. Because you can micro that, and it hits the entire map of ZMGs, and can pop them down with ace. So... Round, uh, round 30 ZMG is being one of the strongest rushes in the game. This is definitely a pretty good upgrade. Now, I wouldn't say it's good as the Super um, the super Storm because it can't really defend fortified ZMGs too well. And it can't defend small amounts either too well. So, like, you're not going to use it to micro fortified bad insides. Plus, it's a micro bull ability. It's not one tower like the Super uh, like the super Storm. So, I think we'll put it in B tier, but it's still pretty good overall. 
Flying Fortress. Flying Fortress has received a lot of buffs recently. Before, it was definitely a garbage upgrade, like in the past, but it's gotten a lot of damage buffs, price reduction. A lot of things have happened to it, and it's actually pretty good against BADs. Pretty good late game as well, so... This guy's probably going to be B tier. I was thinking A tier, to be honest, but I think it's going to be upper B tier. It, it's got really good damage output. Inferno Ring, this guy is actually absolute garbage. Um, He doesn't even do that well that well against group ZOMGs, which that's like the case with the Ray of Doom, dude. Like, if your thing is high pierce and dealing well with group rushes, how are you getting absolutely clapped by group ZOMGs? I don't get it. I don't get it, bro. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. I'm putting you in D tier. Um, Yeah, we'll just put you right there. What's this biggest one? Biggest one's actually really solid now. They added a stun to it, so um, it actually does pretty well against DDT rushes. It can stun the DTs a ton. It does pretty well against group ZMGs as well because it can stun the entire group ZMG rush. It's definitely one of the better Mortar Fifth tiers, if not the best one. This is going to go into B tier, I think, an upper B tier as well. Perma Charge. The thing with Boomer, kind of what I was talking about with other towers, you never really use the fifth tier upgrades when you use Boomer. So I think this is going to go D tier. I don't think it's perma charge is very good, especially for its price. If you're using Boomer, most of the time you're not using a fifth tier. Grand Sabo. Um, in the past this was glitched in Battles 2 where it didn't actually damage the B fortified BDs, but now I have actually no idea if it's glitched or not. Um, I haven't used it recently because I've always thought it was glitched. To be honest, I've always thought this was glitched and didn't reduce the health of BDs, so I've never really used it much. So, if it's glitched, it's going to be really low. But if it's not glitched, which will will go off that information. And it reduces everything by like 25% if you use it before the rush. It's actually a pretty decent upgrade. We'll put it up here on the basis that's not glitched. Pop and all. Now, pop and all in itself is not very good. Um, it doesn't do that much damage, and I don't think the ability is that great either. But the thing about pop and all, which is actually really useful, is it makes all of your artillery batteries on the map do a bunch of bonus BD damage. So if you have a map of artillery batteries with like Biker Bones ability as well, you can actually shred um, BADs and I have some videos showcasing that. So this guy for buffing your artillery batteries is actually pretty decent, I have to say. Now, we're, how decent is he? I think we'll say bottom of B tier decent. Absolute Zero. I don't think Absolute Zero is very good. Most of the time you can just micro snowstorms and it... Gets what Absolute Zero is going to do for a much cheaper price. Plus, you have Icicle and Pale with um, Ice. I don't think this upgrade has much of a place in the game with the other stuff you can do with Ice. So, we'll put it at the bottom of C tier. And last one is Transforming Tonic. This upgrade is actually really good. If you have a map of Perma Brood Ninjas and you have 10 Shinobi stacks and all of them, you use this. It's one of the highest damage output fifth tiers in the entire game. This upgrade the, like can destroy round 40 BADs. Ninja all can absolutely shred round 40 BDs sometimes, and this is one of the big reasons why. So, we're putting this bottom of A tier. It's, it's a really solid upgrade. And, yeah, that is my entire list. Let me know what you agreed with, what you disagreed with, in the comment section down below. I know I'll definitely get some hate on some of these, but um, these are my opinions. Let me know yours, and you can make this list too. I'll send the, put the link in the... um in the description too but hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please hit the like button subscribe button it really makes a really big difference if this video hits 1000 likes ladies and gentlemen i will make a brand new tier list just make doing the monkeys just um listing the monkeys on their strengths because this is just fifth tier upgrades this is not how strong each tower is if this video hits a thousand likes i'll make a tier list for how strong each tower is so make sure to hit the like button but that's it for today round like out peace lads thank you so much for watching